back with another episode of Yarn Smart. So we have another special guest for us today. Um, so if you want to introduce who you are, maybe where you're from and what you currently do. Yeah, well, kia ora tātou. Uh, nei koa mihia te kia pōtou te whānau. Uh, uh, te tonu rā, uh, te iwi taketake o te iwi moemoea, uh, te whānau wana rua, uh, te whānau o te awabako, uh, biripi, uh, warumi, uh, tēnā tātou katoa. Uh, ko au, um, Taipu Moana is my name. Uh, I am uh, originated from a little place in New Zealand called Waikato. Uh, and even more smaller, a little place called Huntley or Rahui Pōkeka, we call it. Um, yeah, so I hail from New Zealand. Um, been here in the Oz uh, for three years now and uh, currently uh, assisting people in, in my current role as a therapeutic family counsellor with Headspace Maitland uh, and the Headspace Group nationally. Mm. Cool, thanks. Awesome. And um, how did you get to where you are today? Yeah, well, yeah, thanks, thanks, Sam. <laughs> well, again, like everybody, you know, everything's a journey. Um, in terms of where I currently have landed, um, family or whānau uh, brought me here to uh, uh, this huge uh, country. Um, and, you know, with the calling of uh, family and seeing uh, grandchildren, you know, grow up and wanting to do that, plus giving myself a new challenge in life uh, later on in life, um, yeah, I just, we decided, my wife and I decided to, to come to Australia. Um, in that, uh, in my journey prior to that was um, uh, uh, a 24 year journey of through mental health systems and so um, seeing what was happening here in, in Australia and looking at the current um, environments um, I've yeah decided to come and I suppose uh, impart my skills and knowledge uh, to more families uh, global families or you know in this in this space in this environment so yeah Cool. Yeah, nice. That's cool. Um, can you recall maybe a tough time or tough situation um, that you were in or faced with and then what was your process and sort of steps to get back on top of things? So maybe it was a, a time that tested your mental health and then, and then your process and steps to get that strong again. Yeah, well, look, I mean, if I sort of uh, go back to my career with mental health, it, it sort of, well, nothing happens by accident. Yeah, yeah. Uh, everything is as it should be and everything is deliberate. So if we take that approach, um, there were a number of sort of uh, uh, events that sort of led me to um, the mental health uh, system. Um, starting my career in 1999, um, yeah, I was um, selected, I suppose, selected, mm. shoulder tapped, yeah to yeah. come over and look at a, uh, a cultural system that uh, we wanted to put in place in, back in New Zealand. And so I was part of that movement to develop cultural uh, programs and cultural services to the, to the general public. And so th my journey started from there. And I suppose if I look at it from an uh, organisation or point of view, um, yeah, it was a way of uh, developing my skills in an environment and again an acute um, a mental health uh, inpatient environment uh, where we needed a cultural input uh, where our families required that cultural support as they were coming into acute mental health services. Uh, not only that, there were also um, the ability and again at the time sort of being more culturally um, uh, responsive uh, not only to families, but to uh, the clinical teams, uh, psychiatrists, psychologists, um, yeah, OTs, and we needed those expertise to and knowledge to share with them because a lot of our uh, families, uh, Māori, uh, again, and similarly to our uh, Indigenous folk here, the disproportionate um, um, numbers uh, and within the mental health and the corrections facilities were you know way beyond the general population 
and so requiring uh, those types of skills. Um, I, I led a, um, a team, well, we, we developed the team uh, to roll out cultural responsiveness and cultural sensitivity uh, into a, a general population audience. So in terms of uh, looking at it from a, a tough time, I suppose, look, uh, with that, it was really tough to get on the ground because the, I suppose, um, unspoken uh, uh, biases that were in place, the uh, uh, I was just sort of thinking about um, the workplace environment at the time, Sam, where yeah. um, there was unconscious bias, but also uh, uh, this whole organisational sort of uh, bias to um, embracing cultural mm. aspect to a clinical care and yes. so from yeah it was really tough to actually uh, educate a general population that was medically or western medically based yeah uh, having to embrace these cultural uh, aspects into their to their care yeah so yeah. being part of that was, was a fantastic journey so my, my my journey started from that and then uh, slowly progressed to you know being a cultural alcohol and drug clinician so mm -hmm. there were options made you know around psychology um, and uh, nursing um, and I had a great sort of mentorship uh, right throughout my journey uh, and uh, put into roles of leadership uh, that uh, I suppose gave me the opportunity to work with a whole lot more people um, yeah. from the ground right up to uh, you know those intellectuals and academics so mm. cool yeah nice um so brother one of the things like I, I really take notice and you and i've had many conversations at different points of times um mm. and one of the things like you've mentioned here so far as well is around that cultural aspect um would you like to speak a little bit on um your views as to how important you know a cultural because we're going to have you know, I'm going to have a lot of viewers that um, have a cultural background. And I just want you to speak on um, the, the importance of, of culture within, you know, that um, the mental health um, area, how it plays, or how it plays a, a role. Yeah, look, it's, it's really fundamental in, um, you know, uh, Indigenous, you know, you know, look, I'd say the general population, but more importantly with Indigenous people, yeah. Um, you know, culture uh, underpins, overarches a whole lot of what we do. Yep. Um, and so living and breathing, it was almost, you know, we, we do this on a daily basis. Um, but, you know, over, over generations and centuries, we've forgotten about those uh, natural things that occurred, uh, you know, when uh, my ancestors, my tupuna first arrived in New Zealand. So we maintained hey, uh, the... Um, I suppose, uh, collection of whānau groups or family groups. I'll use whānau uh, interchangeably. Um, yep. Yeah. Um, so throughout this uh, interview, but whānau. So, you know, a central point of, uh, of our culture was about uh, having commun communities, yeah, uh, where everyone was in a village, yeah. Everyone belonged to a village and our villages are still there today. So if we, if we understand culture, we understand it's really important that we are aware of our, our ancestry, we're aware of our, our, our people and where we're settled and how important um, uh, land is to the people and people to the land. So culture underpinned everything we did. Um, colonization, yeah, and I'll talk a little bit about colonization because you know, we, it's been heavily influenced around the world, but importantly, back in New Zealand, um, culture played a part uh, and was largely ignored up until uh, as recent as 1970 in New Zealand. So although we were going to our little villages, our marae, and uh, doing those activities that we do on the marae, uh, you know, playing by the river, we're having land there, we've got uh, tons of land that our kids could, uh, you know, go and explore, um, we were still sort of uh, subjected to, uh, you know, this, um, I suppose, bureaucracy that we currently sort of operate in today. 
However, in saying that, I mean, the culture, cultural underpinnings and things such as um, we call them hui, they, they're big gatherings. We have a lot of hui, uh, gatherings of our uh, tribal members. And we still use the term tribe um, from a, in a cultural point of view. We, we're, we're known as tangata whenua or people of the land. So again, we're using our terms, yeah, and you know, really holding on to our language so that we can be really clear about uh, our identity. Because I mean, in, in itself, uh, culture and the, the, the ancestors that we belong to and the bloodlines that we belong to, yeah, ultimately uh, gives us that sense of pride, that identity that wherever we are around the world, we can connect back to our heartland, yeah, to our place. And so really important when you're uh, trying to sort of support people in the mental health industry where you know, a lot of the times, uh, you know, the world has uh, engulfed them and, and, and swallowed them up uh, because of these uh, new technologies and these new systems. So for us, it's about going back, uh, going back to those older systems that we've had and yeah. uh, designing a space and way for our people uh, to traverse any of these sectors or uh, yeah, all these systems, you know, whether it be criminal uh, justice system, whether it be social uh, welfare systems, uh, medical and health uh, systems. And we wanted to ensure that our people uh, were met with, you know, people uh, of like, you know, who are affiliated yeah. to, yeah, to those certain uh, traditions. So, yeah. And, yeah, culture is really important. Yeah. It's um, yeah one of those things that I've continued to promote, continue to utilize in my practice. Um, and let's uh, let's not forget that it's evidence based. Yeah, mm -hmm. so everything that we do is evidence based. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we have a um, and we've always sort of um, in 1980, Professor Mason Jury. Uh, pulled out uh, what we now know as Te Whare Tapafa, which is the holistic approach in, uh, to, to health and mental health. And so that's gone worldwide. Uh, and, you know, he, it's often talked about through indigenous cultures, but also in mainstream cultures where uh, our view of health uh, doesn't just, um, uh, isn't limited to, to Western medical science that we've now got uh, those components of family or whānau, uh, te hiningaro, which is the, the mental health, uh, te hauora, or the tinana, which is the physical health. And of course, in one thing that, you know, our mainstream clinicians uh, often will not touch are the spiritual health components or the wairua, the wairua we call it, having this sense of wairua, you know, they might term it as intuition, they might uh, term it as, um, you know, those gut feelings, but ultimately for us, you know, wairua is the connection between uh, earth and sky, yeah, the yeah. heavens and, and the planets, yeah, and so we have a connection with that, it all depends how we're connecting. Hey, to that greater, wider world. And remember, yeah, everyone uh, can be spiritual if they uh, allow themselves to be. It's about now searching for that. So, yeah, culture uh, in its uh, essence, G, is really, really important for uh, uh, yeah, uh, families, young people traversing yeah. these, these systems. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I think, you know, Sam and I are both in agreement with you there. And I think... A lot of people, particularly, you know, the cohort or, or demographic that we'll be reaching um, that know Sam and I understand that that's very much um, what we promote. But to hear it from um, somebody else, I think, is just as powerful. So, yeah, that's, that's awesome to hear. Um, now, brother, you, you know, through your industry and, and no doubt through your experiences and your journey, you've, um, you've dealt with some, some heavy stuff and you would probably deal with some heavy stuff on a daily basis here and there, but um, brother, what, what do you yourself, what do you do to, to kind of unwind and, and relax and, and vent? Do you have an escape? Yeah, yeah, nice question, bro. Um, look, uh, there's uh, a number of things that, I, that, I, that I've done and sort of continue to and maintain those things. Um, one is about, um, you know, really understanding who I was. And look, I didn't really find myself until uh, around 25 years old. You know, um, I was still sort of blowing in the wind, you know, up till that time. 
uh, where I thought that, you know, rugby league could be a career sort of move, but then, you know, needed a certain uh, commitment to that. Um, and lured away by, you know, the distractions of, you know, girls and, uh, you know, alcohol yeah. and drugs, and that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, which is, again, common. It's a common thing. Um, but ultimately, um, um, I've maintained those um, things around, and I'll um, put it in context to keeping myself um, balanced. Uh, and one of those things is about uh, physical fitness, yeah? Yeah. Um, you know, those daily walks or those daily runs that we do. And, yeah, again, we're doing it religiously. Not, not being religious, but doing it religiously. Uh, you know, that, that becomes part of your life. I mean, and as young fellas, we, we grew up in the streets, right, playing playing footy on the on the streets, not the uh, the rugby field, until we hit the rugby field and we were pretty good. Um, so, you know... Uh, uh, looking at those things, we were a sporty family. We maintained sports. We you know, attended Saturday rugby league and rugby and netball and all those things. So yes. that's standard, stock standard in my life today still. Um, so I often get out and uh, run and walk and <clears throat> just smell, smell the roses, basically. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, and in that space, um, there I have time for what we call a karakia. Uh, which is acknowledgements to our creator, hey, to the creator. And so I ins I've instilled that, installed that for a long time. It's always been part of my life in and out, but for now uh, it's been a religious part of my life where I give thanks to our creator again for being here. Yeah. For allowing me opportunities and uh, meeting many, many people of, of this world. Um, so that's a stock standard. And then ultimately um, I love playing my guitar. I love going diving. Eh? Um, uh, and we dive for, uh, and you've got plenty of it over here, sea urchins. Yeah? Love the sea urchins. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful food. So those things keep me balanced. Singing and art. Yeah, I love, love to sing and I love art. So, yeah, those things that keep me grounded. And then most importantly, and attached to that is, is my family. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, really, yeah, underpinning all those or overarching that in my family. So I yeah. give time. Mm. And just giving that time, yeah. That's awesome, brother. That's awesome because, um, you know, along with um, the other awesome people that we've interviewed, you know, it's, again, it's a common ground, like a word that's come up across the board is, is time, is mm. allowing time to do that, allowing time to let yourself... Um, be in that space whatever it may be whether um it's fulfilling certain affirmations each day to you know to allow your mind to clear or like yourself the physical activity side and um or the artistic side or the family side like allowing and taking that time so i think that's a really um it's really awesome for people watching to see that regardless of your background you know there's always commonalities yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, there's this big buzz thing out in the world and it's been around for centuries. They called it mindfulness, yeah? Yeah. And it's, it, we've been practicing that stuff for generations, eh? Yes. For millennia. Yeah. yeah. Um, however, it sort of hit the mainstream and, you know, people are, you know, sort of, it's a worldwide sort of phenomena now where mindfulness is part of, uh, you know, just being present and, and being, you know, and just being. And so when we sort of often go to our, our uh, villages or marae, um, we, we often get into those states of being, yeah? Yeah. Uh, and it could be with 20 people, it could be with 500 people, yeah? It could be with 1,000 people, but those states of being uh, continue uh, to be practiced um, daily, weekly, monthly, yearly uh, with our people. And so we then come into a sense of balance, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, um, that's what we want to, you know, help families with, you know, to, to bring that sense of balance, knowing that, you know, the world's problems and your problems are, are going to be there, and that's fine. It's great to have problems, yeah. Uh, but it's even greater to look for solutions. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, and I think that's an important message to get across. And, um, you know, brother, you're uh, a wealth of knowledge. Like I say, you and I and Sam as well. You've had many conversations. Um, over the time we've known you and, and, you know, we've even taken some stuff away from our, from the conversations we've had with you. But 
for those people that are that are out there that haven't necessarily met you, um, what sort of advice, brother, would you put forward to um, people out there that might be, you know, doing it a little tough or, or a little bit unsure as to where things are at for them at the moment? Yeah, thanks, G. I mean, that's a, a fairly loaded question, but uh, totally, uh, you know, sort of in the right context, and particularly for, you know, uh, organisations like ours, Youth Express, uh, Headspace, Samaritans. I mean, the one thing that I've uh, seen over time is that um, no matter what adversity uh, you're going through, um, always reach out. Hey, reach out. Um, you know, if we uh, become insular and reclusive, then, you know, we won't be able to share the story. And when you share the story, it's a great thing. Yeah. So one's about sharing the story. Two is about sort of saying, well, I mean, you need to have that trust in, in somebody or someone. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. And so having that, you know, ability to just, um, yeah, trust uh, people um, and, and start building those, those rapport and friendships and relationships because from there, you know, great things will happen. And, you know, you've heard that sort of adage of, you know, uh, um, your problems aren't your own. You know, share the issue and mm. it'll be a little bit lighter. Um, but ultimately just to, you know, reach out if you're in trouble or if you're... Yeah, and look, there are people willing to, to help, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, for you and I, G, Sam, we've been in the industry to, you know, and we, this is our this is our mission, right, to yeah. help people. Hey, yeah. you know, we've been endeared uh, and tasked to help people. So, you know, give all that you've got and impart all that you have uh, so that someone else can uh, benefit and take it, you know, and take advantage of, of those skills that you're imparting them with so yeah. um yeah reach out guys reach i think out. um i think along with that as well a, a part of what we want to we want to sort of build here um is i guess there's a little bit of a stigma around receiving help from from organizations such as headspace um or even you know ours so it's kind of a matter of you know these people are here to help you um and they are everyday people um that do have the knowledge and stuff and they're going to help you we don't have to be i guess afraid or worried that it, it is a scary thing to i guess one um understand and realize that maybe you do need some support and you can't handle this by yourself but then two um to step into a place that is a little bit unfamiliar to us can sometimes unsettle us but um thanks for coming and i guess you know jumping on for a bit of a yarn today to try and I guess makes people understand that you know um, there are some amazing people like yourself that can help you, and it's not just some scary person that's going to sort of you know be a little bit overwhelming for you. So no, yeah, you know, super tight white lab table. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I tell you, I mean, you know, that's the thing. I mean, we've got a, and this is a message I like to give out there. You know, I do one thing that challenges you or you know scares you each day. Hey. Um, you know, let's take that step forward because I think that's the um, important part, you know, taking the step, you know. Um, Neil Armstrong and the guys that hit the moon, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't have done what they've done if they didn't take the first step. Yeah, no. that's right. No. That's right. So, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, for, um, thanks, thanks for jumping on, but we really appreciate that. Yeah, uh, um, yeah it was awesome to, awesome to chat. And, um, yeah, I have no doubt that what, you know, this, this, the message you shared and the story you shared will resonate with um, with our people that will be watching. So, yeah, we thank you heaps, bro, for your time. No, thank you very much, uh, gentlemen. It's, uh, it's a pleasure. And, you know, again, like uh, um, we do in our, uh, in our culture, um, we meet to those that, um, you know, have given that time for for us to uh, have the opportunity so on that note i just want to acknowledge you both for allowing me to to be here and be part of this uh, uh, cordial or discussion <laughs>